friends, today I'm going to share with you five spending habits that we used to have as a family, but then we realize that it's not helping us reach our financial goal anytime soon, and it's draining our finances. So we stop and re-evaluate our lives, re-evaluate our spending. <laughs> and so right now we are not perfect, of course, but definitely we, I could tell that we were better than we used to manage our finances in the past. So number one is spending without a plan, also known as spending by impulse, also known as spending without a budget. So we used to go to a mall once or twice a week, especially after church service, and we would eat lunch there, room around without anything in mind. And then if we see anything on sale, especially even if we don't really need it, then we just buy it left and right. But since we started this financial journey a couple of years back, my husband and I would sit and budget every month, and that includes apparel or clothing. And then we would talk with each other or uh, evaluate our kids if they would need a new pair of winter boots, for example, or if my husband would need anything for himself, then we will make sure that we would include that in our budget. So we budget first and then we would go somewhere to find the things that we want. So number two is to spend on current trend. So marketing strategies are becoming so creative through the years. So they would invent like Boxing Day sale, Black Friday sale, anything they could imagine just to entice those consumers to buy their products. And then we used to be one of those people who are lining up in front of Nike store, for example, even if we already have lots of shoes, but we are just trying to get more just because it's on sale. And so it doesn't mean that those people around us are doing these things, probably they could afford for other reasons. We just chose not to be one of them because we don't need more stuff. Number three is spending to feel better. Well, I used to go to uh, Subis before if I get tired from work because Subis is close to where I used to work and then I'll buy threads for kids. I will buy lots of things that I already have in my pantry, in my freezer, in my fridge, and I used to have lots of expired food just because I keep buying left and right without thinking about it. And also, I would, if I feel bored, I would ask my husband if he could go to the mall and then buy blouse for myself, sweater, shoes, the list could go on and on just to make me feel better because I need that for myself. Uh, well, there's nothing wrong about that if you're doing that. That's a form of self-care. But if we are like just buying this uh, without thinking about it, for us, I'm just talking based on our experience, we realized that uh, we could have this pacifier for free. Like, you know the, those pacifier to make us feel uh, calm, to make us feel better? We could watch our favorite documentary or movie at Netflix. We could spend time with family, listen to podcasts, uh, listen to favorite music or have a walk uh, if it's not winter time there's a lot of things that could pacify us or could help us feel better without the need of spending lots of money not to mention doing devotion and reading your bible be reminded of god's promises for us number four is spending to impress others now this is more of a confrontational thing and if you're going to ask me years before Maybe I'll, I'll answer you like, no, I'm not buying this to impress other people. But then we pause and reevaluate our lives and ask this question. What if you're living in a uh, social media free era? Like social media doesn't exist and no camera. So you cannot show it off to people or even to those people living around you. Are you still going to buy this item? And if the answer to that question is no for myself, then I'm pretty sure I have the wrong motive of buying that. So now I constantly remind myself that I'll buy this because I need this, I'm going to enjoy using this one, and I buy this for myself. Number five is spending without keeping track. And this is huge for us because we used to spend by impulse again, left and right, and then we don't keep track on our spending. And at the end of the month, we realize that why do we owe credit card debts that we can't pay 
with the money remaining on our checking account. And so we come to an agreement with my husband. This one needs to stop. So again, with the budget that we have, even if my husband is working away, when he calls, we would talk over the phone like, hey, how are we doing with our budget? How much money left on our grocery budget? How much money left on our fun budget? And so that's what we've been doing. Again, we're not quite there yet, but we are trying our best to become better on this finances thing. <laughs> and so that's it for today. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your time. I hope that I inspire one person a day. And together, let's be grateful for the things that we already do have while we keep on working towards our goal. Until my next one. Thanks.